So I know I've been doing a lot of Rebirth stuff because it's kind of new and fresh, but let's go back in time when Marvel decided to do the all-new brand. Now, all-new really just meant this is kind of like a soft reboot after the Secret War event, and we got a couple of new titles, maybe a couple of changes in the uh, who's uh, who and where who took over the mantle and stuff like that. And so today, I'm going to go and talk about some of the comics I've really enjoyed when it first started up until now for the all-new brand. And I'm just going to include pretty much any Marvel comic that was made after All New, even if it didn't have All New in the title. So, if you have any on the list that you think definitely deserve to be in the top five, please list them below. But let's get to my top five All New Marvel titles, or at least starting from the All New launch, which was, I believe, in 2015. Let's go. I'm going to start off the list with All New Wolverine. Despite a lot of hate when characters switch the mantle, I always welcome it with open arms. I love to see new characters try to live up to the old and sometimes even surpass them and a lot of times they could as long as the writer actually loves the character they're writing and I feel like Tom Taylor definitely loves Laura and definitely wants her to have a definitive moment and she has a plenty in this series. With All New Wolverine we have Laura who's trying to fill the shoes of Wolverine but she's a very very different type of animal and doesn't really rely on the rage that Wolverine did but more of the anger in terms of her past and how she's overcoming it whereas Wolverine always basically just succumbed to his anger unless he was uh, taking care of kids anyway Add on to the fact that she also has a great supporting cast that is both tragic and fun to play around with, and you have an extremely solid title. There's also some just great arcs, and some of them are kind of like rehashes in a way, like the animated state line, but they're kind of done different. And the good part is it that this title is always action-packed, it's always really fast-paced, it always has some really funny dialogue, and to me, this story is definitely worth checking out if you're a Wolverine fan or if you're not, which... I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge Wolverine fan, and this is probably one of my favorite Wolverine titles. Coming in at number four is the Mighty Thor. Thor is a character I just never been interested in. I'm going to actually really be honest, I don't give a fuck about the mystical god stuff all that much in really anything. I mean, it's cool sometimes, like I like God of War, and I do like the movies for the most part when they add in those god features, but it's just not something I was you know into growing up however i know a lot of people love it it just wasn't for me so when jane foster took over the mantle it kind of piqued my interest for a couple of reasons the biggest one being that she has to deal with cancer while wielding the hammer so you have two things that you have to juggle in your life and that's something that i always find interesting because that's what i'm writing about and sparks is dealing with cancer and getting the power of uh electricity and that's really what jane is doing is that she's dealing with cancer but she's actually uh door now and she's trying to do both and one of the things is killing her I find the human side of this thing extremely interesting throw in the fact that when all new started uh, we had to introduce a couple new characters and Jason Aaron has been on the Thor title way before he took over with Jane so he knows what he's doing and now introducing characters like Loki and of course bringing back the old Thor uh, it is getting more and more interesting and also one of the best features about this ongoing title is the art it is gorgeous so the mighty thor surprisingly has been one of my favorite titles for the all new setup all right steve rogers this is probably going to be the most controversial title on this list or actually most listed Cap's story unfolds in a way that he was raised by Hydra to infiltrate the world and use them. Uh, th right off the bat, this is going to offend some people. And uh, if, if you take just a moment before you let it just be, oh my god, Cap is a Nazi. If you take a moment and read it, you can really see how interesting the storyline here is. And it's probably one of my favorite Cap series I've read since Ed left. I'm going to go as far as to say it is my favorite Cap, like uh, in terms of talking about Steve Rogers. It is my favorite arc I've seen him go through since Ed finished his run all the way back in like 2007 or whatever. Watching how Hydra used Nazis and gained control through the world and then just kind of left them in the dust to become something even bigger and scarier and, and having our most trusted and looked up to hero on their side is super engaging. I, I love this spy. I love this kind of spy uh, betrayal type world that Cap does. And uh, to me, it's been a long time since we got into that again. Uh, but also the fact that it's tying in with the Secret War event, which if you haven't heard is basically Cap making his move to take over the world and kind of turn the government on everybody and kind of give a new world view. And not everybody is actually disagreeing with Cap, which is scary because it's almost like this real world that we're living in now where you 
you you can see the bad, but people are like, uh, but you know, they say it's like this, so why isn't it? Like it's using the headlines and the media, and it's so engaging to my in my opinion of what Cap's doing. So if you can take a moment not to listen to Bleeding Cool's headlines or read another comic book blog site and just kind of form your own opinion, I think you're really going to enjoy Steve Rogers as much as I do. And if not, well, fuck it. This is my list, and I'm really loving Steve Rogers for the most part. Coming in at number two is Daredevil. Some people love Mark Wade's run, some did not. I'm kind of like right in the middle. It was a solid run, but not mind-blowing. It, it really was trying to juggle more of a light-hearted Daredevil, but I don't think it worked all that well in the end for me. Saying that, Soul tries to kind of take a hold of the darkness that this title is used to being, and this Daredevil run definitely resembles more of like the Bendis and uh, Brew Baker and Frank run, and it, it, you know, some hate it because it diverted back to that, which I can understand if you really enjoyed Mark Wade's run. However, me, I fucking love, love, absolutely love the darkness that Matt lives in, and that's not a pun, I know he's blind, but no, I'm talking about like just... You know what I mean. And so with a new sidekick, new enemies, and new issues, Matt life is getting just more chaotic. And that, to me, is the most interesting part of Daredevil and Matt Murdock's life. The most current arc, too, was both exciting and fresh. And the series just kind of keeps growing and building on things. And you kind of are getting nervous of where it's heading. And I just got to be honest, it is probably one of the most consistently good titles. And Daredevil really, even in Mark Waid's run, was never bad. That's the great thing about Daredevil. So if you want a consistently good entertaining title daredevil's your one and coming in at number one is the vision a limited run series 12 issues the vision is probably one of the most talked about comics in the last few years tom king decided to take a character that most people don't really give a shit about let's be honest maybe some comic nerds out there high five yeah that's no problem but most people don't care about the vision instead tom king was like nah man let me take this character i'm gonna put him in like a hitchcock type world and it's both dark and it's scary and it's twist and turns and there's family drama and there's death and there's betrayal and there's secrets oh my god this series just keeps building and building to a very satisfying ending but it's really the journey that's the highlight of this story what i want to do to kind of like just relive the moment of reading the first like eight issues it's so good anyway anyone who hasn't picked this title up i don't know what the hell you're waiting for it's not maybe an ongoing series so maybe that's why you're not hearing it now and this year but after the all new started vision is definitely one of those titles you need to pick up because it's one of the best titles in the marvel just anything marvel in the last few years but that is my list. Now listen, I, you don't have to agree with me. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with the Steve Rogers one. That's fine. I would love to see your list of top five. Let's try to keep this civil. I know people for some reason just like to shit on everything on the internet. But I like to kind of keep it more engaging and fun. If you dislike the direction Marvel's going, that is totally fine. But let's keep it respectful. Do not make fun of anyone's list. Do not attack people. Come on, guys. Grow up. This is comic books. It is entertainment. Let's have fun talking about it, not disrespectfulness. Anyway, everybody have a good day. Check out my other comic book uh, videos that I made recently. I love making these, so I hope you guys are enjoying them. And everybody, have a wonderful day.